guys i have never been more annoyed and more upset than this moment i had no choice but to get on camera usually as you guys know i would not get on camera unless if I'm just super exhausted, but I know that as far as editing and putting all the videos and things together, I will not have that time. And I've already missed you guys for one week. There is no way, while my anger is still hot, that I am going to miss you guys for a second week. Nope. I refuse. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, you are talking to Re. Yes, I know I've done the intro after I've gotten that frustration out, but... Whew, we are here. You're talking to me why I come to talk about what I've either read in the blogs, watched on TV, or heard in these streets. Today it is about what I have watched on TV. We are doing 90 Day Fiance, The Other Way, Season Finale, and Tell All 1 and 2. I am going to try to keep this video as you know short as possible. We're going to get straight to the point, as you guys know, because I don't like to mess around with things. But if you like what you see, please make sure you like you comment and you subscribe. I want to hear from all of you guys. I love the feedback that you guys give me in previous videos. By the way, we have reached the 500 subscribers mark. Woohoo! Yes. So I am so grateful for the support. I am grateful that this channel is, you know, we're going to grow this together. It's, we're slowly becoming a family and I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you guys for the constant support. Let's get to it guys because we've gotten the pleasantries out of the way. <laughs> Let's get straight to business. As I said to you, this is a wrap up of season finale and as well as the tell all. So we're going to be mixing and mingle. Okay, we're going to be throwing it here and there. It's going to be a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Excuse the mess behind me. I do not care at this moment because I really needed to speak to you guys while my anger is hot because I just saw this episode. Okay, let's get straight to it. Let's get Gabe and Isabel out of the way. As you guys know before, um, Monica decided, Gabe's sister Monica decided that she was not attending the wedding, right? So Gabe and Isabel decide, screw her, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get married. They are now a married couple. Woohoo, great, sure, whatever, right? Guys, here is my thing with Gabe. As you guys have already know, I already told you guys, I believe that Gabe is an instigator. He is a huge instigator. And what I've realized is that he likes chaos. Okay. So the reunion we have where we have like his friend that comes out because they really didn't have too much drama outside of, okay, Monica not attending and, you know, us trying to figure out if the family would accept. So now they bring out his friend where I'm like, why do we have all these extra people at the reunion? Which I'm going to get to in a little bit, but whatever. We bring out the friend that we've only seen for 15 minutes in one episode. Did, don't even think we saw him at the wedding. But whatever. Brings him out where they talk about their... um not their nightlife and club life and so as we know Isabel doesn't like the friend here's my thing what I have realized is is that Gabe stirs the pot okay your the, the friend is single and I keep forgetting the friend name is it Fred or Trey whatever his name is but the friend is single and so you are telling your wife of the friend's dating life which is really none of her business right and so now, your wife, who you probably already knew was jealous, and you created this space of, you know, jealousy, it's, and then you relate it back to your friend, and it's very similar to the Monica matter. It's very similar to you telling Isabel one thing and then telling Monica another, and now these two women have these issues with one another. And, and to me, he's done the same thing with his friend. And we really don't care about any of that, guys. Because we could have went on and spoke about somebody completely else. But here's my thing with Gabe. Gabe pissed me off this reunion. Gabe is like, he's voicing his opinion at matters where it was not needed. And I felt like he was super disrespectful to my mood in regards to the religion matter. Here's my thing. Red or up, my mood was Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, um, practice Bud Buddhism, forgive me if I'm saying it wrong, Scientology, whatever. You know, most people teach their children what's in their household. 
Okay? If they're Christian, they're going to take their kids with them to church. What are we talking about here? Okay? Um, if they are, 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 are Buddhists, they're going to take their kids to the temple. So why is that a problem when he is saying that in regards to his children? It's his kids. You don't tell someone how to parent their household. For someone that is wanting people to accept them, it is very deplorable on the way that you handled my mood. And was just like, well, you know, you let them decide. Like, are you going to force? Are you going to diss? Are you going to make them aware of this and that? Who cares? He's not asking you about you and Isabella, you, you and Isabella and her children, and how the kids will be raised, you know, in an LGBTQ family. He's not asking that. You want everyone to respect your lifestyle. You respect his. It was very disgusting and deplorable the way he handled that. And what pissed me off more was when he went to mock Mahmoud's accent. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Like when he was doing all the day, it was disgusting. It was so disgusting. And at that moment, I saw Monica in him. Like he really looks like Monica. It's just that he's transitioned. But at that moment, the ignorance that he showed there was just as ignorant as what Monica was showing to his now wife, Isabel. Gabe got on my nerves so hard, this reunion, but we move on. But you know what? Before we move on, let me address something in regards to the my mood matter. Nicole is an instigator. Because here's the thing. Gabe told Nicole prior to them coming on set how he felt about Mahmood. He he told her that. And what did Nicole say? Are you going to tell him that? With, 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 with glee in her eyes and with a smirk on her face. That's the same type of matter that she did to her friend in Egypt. When you were excited to bring that friend to meet Mahmood. So then... She can get out all of the feelings that you're feeling while you sit back and play the, yeah, I don't know. And then threw her to the wayside. The same way with Gabe, where now all of a sudden Gabe expresses himself, pisses my mood off. Now you do the, oh, babe, you know, it's okay, this and that. And you come on the stage, and now you're crying about world peace. Nicole, you are a person that throws the rocks and hides the hands. Okay, that's literally what you are. You throw rocks and you hide your hand. And I peeped that. And it was very much annoying to see. Now all of a sudden you got, you're got you preaching world peace as if you didn't know that, that Gabe had an issue with your husband. Are you going to tell him that with glee? To the point to where when they started this episode, they replayed that part. They replayed that part. While you're now preaching world peace. Girl... Go on about your business. Debbie and Osama, okay? We find out during the reunion, during um, part one of the reunion, that Osama's been blowing up Debbie's phone. Blowing it up about 30, 40, 50 times a day. And Debbie is ignoring it all. Osama, go on about your life. Debbie wants nothing to do with you. You have already exposed your hand and told everyone that you were with her for the papers. And the more that you try to deny it after you've already admitted it, the more you insult all of our intelligence. It is like, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. So then we bring Debbie's son out, who's just like, how dare you? And you need to get a job. And Osama's like, yeah, I'm going to pass on getting that job. My art is my job. Osama, you paint like a first grader. You paint like a first grader, Osama. Who, the, who on God's green earth is buying that? Are you kidding me? Who will buy that? And so he doesn't want to get a job. And it's, 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 it's truly annoying. But what's driving me nuts is people wanting us to believe that Debbie as well was really interested in Osama. Like, I do not feel bad for Debbie. Debbie, just like Angela, it tried to get her way on TV. That's it. There is no way you want us to believe that you were actually going to move to Egypt. And... You get there and you see that they are in the mother's home. There is no way you want us to believe that you're going to move to Egypt. And you sent him out of your own mouth over $3,000 in the last four years. And he has no job. 
and you can't work out there. And you've already admitted, you put your foot in your mouth, we already admitted later on during this episode that you actually like your man a little bit more seasoned and around your age. But you want to convince us that you were in love with Osama. Girl, you use them to get on this TV, and that's fine because it's 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 very clear, you know, at this point. But Debbie also pissed me off because Debbie now takes the time to go and to she takes the time to make fun of Rishi's accent. What is with the Americans making fun of the foreigners? Yet you're trying to marry these foreigners. I did not like when she was making fun of Rishi's accent when she was trying to point out that Rishi needs to grow some balls and stand up to his parent, to his mother uh, for, for Jen. Okay, but let's get there. So we get to Jen and Rishi. Now, here's the thing. If you guys remember from the final episode, of course, they break off their um, engagement because, you know, she he tells her that the parents, the mom and the uncle's not going to agree to it because she is 16, 17 years his senior, right? Okay, he pulls out the fake tears. We go on by our business. Well, now during the reunion, we find out that they actually reconnected because Jen went out there for a friend's wedding. And during their reconnection, they went ahead and they had sex and they got it on, okay? Boom, they both said that it was fantastic. Great. So now, Rishi, you know, everyone's jumping on him. And it's just like, you didn't stand up to your, your, your mom. You didn't this. You need to grow some balls. You need to this. You need to that. And you are forgetting that he is an Indian man. The problem that I have is that too many of the Americans are not taking into consideration other people's culture. It is not uncommon for a man to be living at home with his family until he's married in India. As a matter of fact, it's not uncommon for the man to move in his wife with the family in India. That's number one, right? Two, Rish is in a situation, Rishi is in a situation where he is a sole provider for his family. The sole provider here, okay? So with him being the sole provider that everyone is dependent on, he really can't leave that household. Rishi is not a millionaire. Rishi is a low-end model who has let himself go because you know now he has a gut. And he is a, a personal trainer who, who I, I'm not too sure how that's going. But, you know, he does not have the funds to go and to maintain two separate households. I'm trying to understand where, you know, with Jen having knowledge of that, how are you now saying, well, no, we need to move this. We need to do that. We need to do that. Do this. You're not standing up to your family. You know, a grown man staying at home, gross old balls. When are you going to move out this and that? Totally ignoring the fact that this is a man from a whole other culture. And a whole nother traditions of things. And you're the one that's trying to marry him. You're the one that's trying to come to India to live there. Hence the reason why this is called 90 Days the Other Way. And no one is considering the people's culture. When you're moving out there. And you're trying to compare it to an American here. Where a 35 year old may be looked at crazy for staying at home with their parents. Completely different out there. Very ignorant and very inconsiderate of everyone at that moment. So that right there also annoyed me. But regardless, Rishi goes on and says that, you know, um, I still consider her my fiance. What? How? You didn't even consider her your fiance before during the two years that she was in the States, right? Because you didn't tell anyone. Now, oh yeah, she's still my fiance. What? BS. Pure BS. So then they ask, well, does your family know that? He lies and says, yeah, the family knows. Completely lies. And then only for us to bring the mother and the uncle out. And it turns out that they didn't know. And he was having the hardest time even telling them at that moment that they were engaged. Just stringing her along. But then when Jen says, no, you tell them right now that we're engaged. You tell them right now that we are engaged and you and that, you know, you plan to marry me between now and a year and a half. You force this man to do that on something that he didn't willingly want to do. That is all the proof that you need. 
Why are we wasting our time with anything further than this? When you have the proof right there. Help me understand this. Is all I'm saying. Okay. So um, he tells the mom. He tells the uncle. We all know that. You know, the moment that they get off stage, she's going to call mom and uncle and be like, yeah, nope. I'm just, we're not doing nothing. Like, we're not getting married. Don't know, don't worry about it. She's now giving me a year and a half. Jen, you are, well, you were 48 on the show. So maybe 49 at this point. A year and a half, that's past 50. You mean to tell me that you're going to go and give this man even more time to play with your time? No sympathy for this girl. None whatsoever. Her friends are out there. Her friends are like, listen, it is just not in the cards for you guys to marry. Because the, the lifestyle is too different. What you are requesting, he cannot give you. Even if he has the parents' blessings, you're not willing to move into the house. He does not have the funds to go and maintain two households. He has to take care of the family. This is not even a situation of a, oh, you know, I'm moving in with my parents because that's just our culture. This is also, I am the sole provider, which I really got questions on. Why is it that nobody else is able to bring in income? That's a lot of responsibility for one person. And that is why the mother was so gun ho on him marrying a girl from the town. Because they may be more understanding of that. You will not be. And you know that it's impossible for him to go and walk away from that. You are requesting the impossible for Rishi. Leave him alone. Move on. Let's get away from all of this, right? But before we end their segment, her girlfriends decides to share their opinion with everyone on how they feel. And so they they speak on the song and they speak on Debbie. Then they get to Danielle and they're like, listen, Danielle, you've emasculated uh, Johan as, you know, as many times as we can count, right? You've emasculated him. And everyone is like, yeah, we kind of agree. And she, even, even Johan is like, yeah, we agree, right? So then Danielle goes on and she's like, well, listen, um, I pay all the bills. So if he want me to cook and clean and all of that, then he needs to start paying the bills. Here's the thing, Danielle, you weren't listening. Emasculation is completely different. It has nothing to do with finances. Let's be real. It has nothing to do with finances. The way you talk to him, you tell him to shut up. You put him down. You do not value any of his opinions. You do not value his feelings. That has nothing to do with money. Because if he was paying everything and then he flipped it on you and he's telling you to shut up in public or he's telling you or he's not respecting your feelings or he's not respecting your opinion and he's paying everything, you will be pissed. Because you're still his spouse, right? Like, whether he's paying everything or not, that does not give the right to emasculate someone. And that is where you are confused. And the fact that you are tying it to money and nobody corrected her at that moment drove me insane. How is it that nobody went to go and break that down to her to say, no, your money and what you're spending does not give you the right to go and make this man feel this small every chance you get? Because then it looks like you're only with him because of his gigantic eggplant. Right? Okay. We move on. Let's get to Chris and Jamie, guys. Okay. Jamie, Jamie and Chris. Chris is still out here lying. Chris has to be one of the biggest liars that appeared on TV. This is not even a she say, she say. This is just a, like, use common sense, guys. Chris has been lying the whole season. She's been lying the entire season. Chris is an addict, allegedly, okay? That's strictly my opinion. But she is an addict to me. And you are crazy if you want us to believe that she has sent $10,000 to this girl in their relationship. And yet you've only paid one month of their bills. But yet you sent $10,000, at other times, you are crazy if you believe that. If anyone believes that, nobody should believe that. No one. Okay? So, during the season finale, Chris, as I mentioned to you guys before, she gives me violent vibes. And she pushed her, which was totally out of line. And then she addresses the push during this reunion by saying, well, you know, if I walk away 
and you, you know, try to stop me from walking away, I black out and I can get violent. That is not an excuse, Chris. And that girl did not put her hands on you. You walked away. She was talking to the camera people standing there at the van. You left your seat, walked across, shoved her. There was no need for any of that, Chris. And I need you to own that. But of course, she didn't own that because she's owned nothing this season whatsoever okay she is still trying to gun ho on well that apartment is expensive because you chose it that's not the one i chose you know uh the one that i chose was for 400 the one like i told you my, my limit was 400 you choose one of, of 550 dollars <laughs> pay the 400 then and let her figure out the, the 150 or even the 400 split it in half Pay the 200 Like, put in something. You put in nothing. Nothing, Chris. Nothing. And you've had an excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse. This time it was the son matter. Oh, you know, my son with jail with this and that. You, 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 you knew you had kids before you decided to move to Columbia. This is one of Chris' many marriages. What is this, her fifth marriage? Chris takes does not respect the union and the sanctity of marriage. She doesn't respect any of that. Marriage to her is just another relationship. That's literally what this is. And so now you are explaining your abusive behavior. But yet this is a woman that wanted to buy a knife the first day that she got out there. Girl, Jamie, what the heck? Goes on. And says, oh, I spent this type of money. Jamie is like, you, you did not contribute none of that. And I have proof for all of that. So then that's when Chris goes, oh, well, you know, the second time I was sending the money through my mother, through her. Like, like she's just a, a compulsive liar. She is a habitual liar. And I have not seen somebody lie that hard. The only people I know that lie as hard as her, the way that she's lied, they were all addicts. Because addicts are used to lying. Okay, just, just my opinion. Okay, allegedly. All right, we're not trying to get sued over here. But what I am saying is that Chris, is, she's so full of it, it's insane. She is truly, truly, truly so full of it. And, you know, she goes on to deflect by bringing up the cheating that took place before you got married, before you brought yourself to Columbia, that you've already explained to us on episode one of this season. We've already heard this story. We've heard the story about her dealing with the woman in Texas. Why are we now revisiting this during the reunion? And why is Sean, the host, have not peeped that this is the same story from before? Because I would have cut it down immediately and be like, oh, wait a minute. The woman from Texas, are you speaking of the story that you've already explained to us before you agree to marry her? And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, well then, let's move on from that. I thought you were telling us something that during your time, the five months that you were gone, which is another thing, she wants us to believe that she did not answer uh, Jamie for five days when she cheated. No, girl. This time you haven't answered her for months. And you wanted to believe that the first time was only a few days? The, like, anyone with common sense would know that Chris is lying. Because her actions now does not even align with the story that she's telling before. Her action now actually aligns with what Jamie has been saying this whole time. You were gone for 20 days to a month. Y'all were not married y'all weren't even engaged she was not sure if y'all were still in a relationship even okay so another woman showed her attention she took it because at that point what are we doing you're in a whole nother country and you've disappeared everybody knows how that goes if you're speaking with somebody in a whole nother state that y'all just basically talking no real interaction no meeting never met no nothing and they disappear on you what do you look like saying, oh, I'm going to wait around? Nine times out of ten, you're going to assume that they're gone for good. You've never even met them. They're nothing more than pen pals. 
And that is what Jamie was explaining. And I understood her completely. So now you reappear a month later. And it's just like, oh, you know, um, she cheated. No, we weren't together. Because in what relationship can you disappear and still expect to have a relationship? Even if you lived in the same town, you can't disappear like that and still expect to have a relationship. In what world? And now this time you disappear while you guys are married. Married. Union. And you disappear for five months and then contribute a dime. But yet you want us to believe that when you weren't married, that you've only disappeared for a few days. I was frustrated right along with Jamie. When Jamie was like, this must be a disease. Oh, it is, girl. It is a disease, right? It is. She's a habitual liar. And, and you know, now they say that drug addiction is a disease. So, yeah, it is. But allegedly, all allegedly. Then you have the other couples tuning in. And I'm thinking, like, Gabe, hey, this is the perfect time for you to call Chris out. You've been jumping in on the foreigners, being disrespectful, making fun of people's accent. This is a perfect time for you to let... Everyone know, Jamie, you're lying. Speak up. This is the time. No, but Debbie speaks up and says, I think that Jamie used her. What show have you been watching, Debbie? What show have you been watching? Used her for what if she disappeared and didn't give her a dime? What is she using for? It makes no sense. And I'm so glad that Veronica and Gabe at that moment called it out and said, no, we don't see that at all. You, you what Debbie what Debbie has no business on this show Debbie is you know good and well you had no intention like you know what we've already addressed that we move on from that okay Chris let's get back Chris wants us to believe that she's given Jamie ten thousand dollars during their relationship you are a ten thousand dollars lie Chris you I don't even believe that you have ten thousand dollars in your account I don't believe that you like like you, you you couldn't even give this woman four hundred dollars but you want us to believe that you've given ten thousand I can't but yeah so that is the end of this episode guys um all of my frustration is just like I couldn't I was just like nope I'm coming on camera. We're getting out the way. We're uploading this right now. <laughs> we are uploading right now. But I want to hear everyone's thoughts. I want to hear your feedback. I want to hear, do you really believe that Chris was shelling out money like that to Jamie that she gave her $10,000? Do you really believe that she only disappeared for three to five days before they got married during the first uh part of their relationship do you believe it do you believe that Gabe was disrespectful and rude do you, do you believe that do you believe that Rishi and Jen should just let this whole thing go and you know just clear us from from this torture do you believe that Nicole was being an instigator and loves to throw rocks and hide her hand I want to hear it all from all of you guys I love you guys thank you so much for the 500 subscribers, let's continue to grow this channel together. Leave your comments below. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Come back for more. Bye.